Statistically, flying is the safest form of travel available. That is, of course, unless you fly out of one of the following 10 airports. These are the most dangerous airports on the planet, and we can't fathom how any government would even consider letting them stay in business. If you want to fly into Bhutan, you only have one choice. Paro Airport is the only airport in the entire country, and it's also one of the most harrowing on the planet. Landing there is literally a life or death experience. Bhutan is a tiny country surrounded entirely by the Himalayan mountains. And what do airplanes hate more than just about anything in the world? That's right, mountains. Not only is the country surrounded by them, they all but conceal the airport until the last minute. That means that the pilot has to navigate by sight multiple jagged edges and peaks while quickly descending to the runway after one final super sharp 45 degree turn. They do all this while dealing with heavy turbulence caused by the powerful mountain winds. Upon landing, passengers literally cheer. They do so both to applaud the pilot's expertise and pinpoint flying abilities and to celebrate the simple fact that they're still alive. If you're a pilot and think you can fly Bhutan's dangerous skies, you're probably wrong. Currently, only eight people are qualified to fly into Paro Airport, and even they can only arrive in the daytime. You stand a better chance of getting struck by lightning right after winning the lottery with a ticket you purchased from the Loch Ness Monster. The typical airport runway stretches anywhere from 8,000 to 13,000 feet. Huan Shou Yi Yerausquin Airport has no use nor room for such luxuries. Its runway, the shortest of any commercial airport in the world, stretches a mere 400 meters or 1,300 feet. That isn't much more than the length of four football fields, and it leaves zero room for error on the pilot's part. As if a barely there runway isn't harrowing enough, whoever visited Sabah Island and decided to build an airport there didn't consider location all that much. Guangzhou Airport is built directly below a mountain and right next to the sea. This means that on one side of the runway lie jagged mountain edges, and on the other side is a steep cliff that drops straight into the ocean. If the pilot doesn't land perfectly on the minuscule runway, everybody on board is in major trouble. Perhaps not shockingly, most planes cannot land here. Commercial jets, for example, are banned from even attempting to arrive at this crazy little airport. The Netherlands Antilles Civil Aviation Authority does, however, allow regional propeller aircraft to land there, as long as they sign the proper waivers. The Dutch are not interested in being responsible should a pilot sneeze at the wrong time and steer their plane straight into the water. If you're wealthy enough to vacation at the super-exclusive Couchevel Ski Resort in the French Alps, you get a crazy, dangerous airport all to yourself. Couchevel Airport features another super short runway, which stretches a mere 1,722 feet. Oh, and it drops off into a steep cliff, meaning if the pilot doesn't gather enough speed while racing down the runway for takeoff, the plane's liable to go careening into the water like Wiley e. Coyote realizing he had just run off a cliff. Landing isn't any easier. For one thing, an imperfect landing would mean either a watery fate or a fiery crash into a tower or even the airport itself. But in addition, the runway actually dips downward. It only dips to an 18.6% angle, but most pilots are trained to deal with straight runways that don't dip or droop in any way. To fly in or out of Couchevel Airport, a pilot needs to listen to Yoda and unlearn what they have learned. Oh, and when you're in the air, there's the slight issue of the Alps themselves. Instruments are useless due to the impaired sight, meaning pilots must fly around the mountains by sight and without instructions from ground control. The only direction they get is to not fly around the airport due to those pesky Alps. In short, the pilot better figure out where the runway is and how best to land there, or a whole bunch of wealthy skiers are going to be awful sore, or awful dead, either one. In 2010, the History Channel ranked the most dangerous airports in the world over a 20-year period. Coming in at number one, Nepal's Tenzing Hillary Airport, which was built smack dab in the middle of the Himalayan mountains and contains nearly every dangerous airport trope wrapped up into one tidy and deadly little package. 
For starters, the airport itself is roughly 9,500 feet above sea level, meaning even while taking off and landing, a plane must deal with wind and turbulence that, thanks to ever-changing weather up high in the Himalayas, could arrive at any time. The runway itself is barely more than 1,700 feet long, and it sports jagged mountain edges on one side, a steep cliff on the other, and a fun vertical drop-off at one end. What's more, the tiny runway surrounded by danger is uneven and bumpy, with an upward curve of around 12%. That's just enough of an angle to make planes lose speed and momentum when taking off, along with gaining too much speed while landing. Unsurprisingly, Tenzing Hillary Airport has recorded many injuries and deaths over its 60-year history. Due to all this, Nepal only allows small propeller planes and helicopters to operate here. Sorry, commercial jet pilots, you're just going to have to work somewhere safer. It may be named after one of the greatest soccer players in history, but Portugal's Cristiano Ronaldo Airport deserves all the red flags for its dangerous history and shoddy attempts to become safer. Originally, the runway at Ronaldo was 5,249 feet long, far from the shortest runway ever, but also much shorter than most. This resulted in tragedy in 1977, when a pilot mistimed their landing, fell off the runway, and crashed into a beach right below it. Over 160 people died, forcing the airport to drastically enlarge their runway and ensure passengers' safety. They kind of did that. The runway is certainly larger now, at over 9,100 feet, but the jury's out on whether it's safer since the new construction is literally supported on columns. The airport erected 180 columns, some right over the ocean, and built their runway extension right on top. These columns endure severe stress upon each landing, and the planes themselves often have to deal with strong crosswinds coming from the Atlantic Ocean. Nobody has died since 1977, but that might only be because they've cancelled many flights thanks to the windy weather. Better safe than sorry, after all. It's fitting that Gibraltar International Airport is named the way it is, because whoever designed the place and chose its location must have had rocks in their heads. The airport's runway actually intersects with a road, and not just any road either. The runway actually cuts through the main road for entering and leaving Gibraltar, which has to shut down every time a plane needs to pass through. It's like make way for ducklings, only far less cute and way more aggravating. Constantly closing down a busy border road has, understandably, led to massive traffic jams and the demand for a tunnel that would let people drive under the runway. Gibraltar has begun construction of the tunnel, but thanks to red tape and other needless delays, it's still not complete. As a result, if you're looking to enter or leave the territory, your only route remains a road that could, at any time, stop everything so a plane can fly through. The airport isn't much fun for pilots either. Thanks to the nearby rock of Gibraltar and Bay of Algeciras, turbulence and strong wind shears are the order of the day, nearly every day. This makes landing extra difficult and pulse-pounding, as if ensuring you don't crush any cars while landing on the runway wasn't stressful enough. In 1941, the US Department of Defense built Nasa Swa Airport in southern Greenland, after realizing the country needed a second airport that could service large planes. That's wonderful, except for the part where they picked a terrible location and gifted the country with a less-than-ideal runway. This airport is located around a fjord, which means strong crosswinds and severe turbulence are typically the order of the day. Even when the weather is otherwise pleasant, the wind can make life difficult for any pilot. Then there's the mountainous area surrounding the airport that the pilot must navigate before setting sight on the runway. Said runway, by the way, is a mere 6,000 feet long, just to add to the challenge. If that isn't enough to tax even the most skilled of pilots, there's also an active volcano nearby. Said volcano tends to erupt fairly regularly too, and when it does, it sends tiny shards of silica everywhere. Silica is a sharp bit made from melting ice, so imagine shattered glass flying in all directions. This can and has easily damaged numerous planes and their engines. Sadly, the only thing pilots can hope for here is that the volcano goes dormant and there are currently no signs of that happening. As it's abundantly clear by now, nobody should ever build an airport that's surrounded by large, jagged mountains. And yet, countries keep doing it, even if the result is needless tragedy after needless tragedy. 
Many consider Tonkon Tin Airport in Honduras one of the most dangerous airports on Earth and for good reason. It's completely surrounded by mountains, meaning pilots cannot simply approach their landing head-on like in normal airports. Instead, they must make a quick, sharp descent accompanied by an equally sharp and quick turn. Only after doing so can they even hope to line up with the runway and prepare for landing. Many pilots have failed this task at the cost of lives. The first major accident occurred in 1989 when a plane crashed into a mountainside while attempting its descent all 132 people on board died. Since then, at least five planes, and possibly more, have also crashed into the mountains or the runway itself. These numerous crashes have finally convinced Honduras to do something about this airport. The country has made numerous efforts to build a new, safer airport in nearby Palmarola. Once this happens, only small aircraft and small domestic flights will be permitted to land at Tonkon Team, and even they would likely rather not. Chances are you've seen pictures of planes arriving at Princess Juliana International Airport in St. Martin. Viral shots of a plane flying right over sunbathers at nearby Maho Beach have gone viral many times over, and for good reason. It looks plain awesome, but the reason those planes fly so close to beach dwellers is far less awesome. Princess Juliana's namesake airport is actually pretty dangerous. With a short runway, just 7,500 feet, pilots have to touch down as early as humanly possible, which translates to low-flying aircraft that look like they're buzzing right over the heads of Maho Beach residents. Unfortunately, this is not without its risks. Strong winds and sand gusts can rip through the beach and overwhelm beachgoers, but that's just the best-case scenario. In the worst case, this landing pattern can take lives. In 2017, a woman was too close to a landing plane and wound up consumed by jet blasts. This unfortunately cost her her life. While such things don't happen often, thankfully, it's still a reality and makes those cool Instagram shots seem just a little bit less fun. Scotland's tiny little Barra Airport completely redefines what an airport is, though perhaps not for the better. It's less an airport and more a single building overlooking the beach. The runway, if you can call it that, is right on the beach. And if it's high tide, then the runway literally goes underwater. This leads to almost surreal images of planes landing in the water, though if such a landing isn't timed right, the watery landing can easily become a crash. Occasionally, fog, clouds or plain old darkness makes landing extra difficult. Rather than let the pilots take their chances, nearby cars have been known to use their headlights to give the pilot the lighting they need to make their landing. It's either that or crash on the beach, so it's good that everybody chips in to avoid such a mess.